Hi, today I'm going to show you how to make interactive fiction in Google Docs. This came across my RSS reader this past week on a gentleman who put together an escape room, as he called it, but it's more along the lines of interactive fiction or choose your own adventure. A whole game he put together in Google Docs. Today I want to show you how he created that so you can use this in your own classroom. Say, instead of just writing another book report or some fiction writing that your students are doing, they could actually go in and put together a little game in Google Docs. Here's the article over at AV Club. And he put together, he's called it an escape room, but that's because in part one, the goal of the game is to get out of the room before you die. But it's basically choose your own adventures. And you can see, we're gonna play it here in a second. You can see he just clicks on the link to figure out what you wanna do. So let's see how he did it and play a little bit of the game. So then we can go back and create our own. So here it is. And if you look up here, he opens a, a, the document up in preview. If you go watch my video on URLs, you can see why that changes the look of the document. But he has escape, a game by, at Anthony BL Smith. Well, his first mistake was using underline. When you are word processing, never use underline because people will think it's a link. This is not a link. Not even, well, the Twitter is a link, but that's in blue. But the rest of this, people are gonna click on this and think it's a link. He did the same thing in the FAQ where you think these are links to things and they're not. They're just underline. Fun fact, underlining came about because typewriters couldn't do italics. So they had to have some way for typewriters to show that this text was in italics. So you underline, that's why you underline book titles. Well, now that we all word process, there is no reason to ever underline again because you can italicize it now. So there's your off tangent remark on underlining. Also, it's only one space after periods, not two. Maybe I'll do that in another video some other time. So here's Escape, a game by Anthony B.L. Smith. And we're gonna look at just part one. Now you notice when I clicked on the link, it opened it up in a new tag, new tab. And he has a nice little, and we only have one option on this one, sleep anyway, sure. And he has graphics that he inserted images. When it comes to you bathed in starlight, you've never seen her before, but you do recognize her. She offers you a choice, the sword or the shield. Well, because I'm a daring man, I want the sword. Why do you feel as if you made the wrong choice? And now we're talking about a train and, but notice he used different font colors. Now you can choose what you want to do. Let's go downstairs and join them. And it, this is, he's pretty deep in this whole thing. Just go back to sleep. And it actually links to a YouTube video. What is real? Okay, that's how he did his. And my only complaint is it opens it up in every new tabs, but that's just the nature of the beast. We're gonna show how he did it. And we're gonna show another way where you can put the entire story into one document and jump between different parts in that document. So you're not opening up all these tabs because this would get confusing for students as they're trying to figure out which document goes to where. So let's close all these. We'll leave that one open for right now. First thing we need to do is make a folder to contain our story because our story is going to consist of a bunch of Google Docs. So we go to Google Drive, go to Folder, The Lost Toy. So now I have this folder called The Lost Toy. Now, why do we want to put them into a folder? Two reasons. One, to keep them organized so we can kind of know where everything's going and two to easily share all of the documents at once to the public if not we have to share each document separately to the public so they can use it if we share the folder to the public then anything we put in that folder is also shared to the public so i'm going to share this folder share and down here we're going to change this link from anybody in the educate.me domain to anyone with the link. 
And now I've got this nice big old link, but we don't want to copy that link because we don't want to show them the whole folder. But now anyone on the internet can see this folder. So once we have our folder, once we have it shared, let's put in our starting document. Now I'm going to put exclamation points at the start of my document. So this document will always be at the top. So I know where it is, the lost toy. And I've already started working on this. You don't have to watch me type things. So here's my lost toy. Here's my first part. I have the lost toy and Johnny woke up trying to find his toy. Unfortunately, it was nowhere to be found. And then we have two options, three options for Johnny to go do. So let's write this look for the toy document. So I go back to my folder, create a new document. And then let's put our text in there for look for my toy. So now I have the look for the toy option. And let's, I'm going to do the other two really quickly. And I'm going to speed this part up. So now I have my four documents. If I do this search sort by name and make it ascending, that's why I put the exclamation points there. So I know this is my main document. I'm going to make links from here to those other documents. So look for the toy. I'm going to highlight that and copy the address. Now I'm going to go over here to the text that I want to link to that document, insert link, paste it in there, but see that edit at the end? I want to change that to preview. And I'll do that for these other ones too. Go back to bed. Change edit to preview. And I'm going to close these documents so you can see how it works. So here is our lost toy. And if I was sharing this with people, I would change the link to slash preview and then share that link with the person, not the link to the Google Drive folder, the link to just the main document. And you notice once I do that, it looks like the other one. So now I can sit here and I can say yell for mom and it opens up that document just like the other one. So now I have my nice little story and I can have more than just one option for all these. I can continue on with more documents. So that's one way of doing it. Now it's kind of a pain because you have to manage all of these different documents. So there is one way to keep it all in one. So if you have students that want to work on this and not, they might not be advanced enough to handle all the multiple documents or they just get lost. We can put this all into one document. So I'm going to start up another Google Doc. And actually, I have the document right here. So what this document has is each page is one of my documents. So instead of having multiple documents, I have each one as a page. But how does that work for linking? Well, for starters, we want to go to view and be sure print layout is checked. If print layout is not checked, all the pages run together and that could be confusing to somebody playing the game. So we wanna be sure print layout's turned on. And now it'll keep up for each, for each page. To add a page to my document. So let's add another option here at the end for our main page. We want to insert a page break don't just hit return a million times to go to the next page. Hit insert a page break and that's under insert. 
break page. So we're going to give this another option for our what we want to do. Make breakfast. Now, for the linking to work easily in the document, we need to use our styles. So I'm going to make breakfast a heading one. And you'll see why we want that in a second. Now under our make breakfast, I'm going to center. And I'm going to insert a picture of waffles. A bunch of bunch of waffles. Now it's still centering, so I do need to left. Instead of searching for the So we have another option here, make breakfast. Now I'm gonna show you how to add that to your list of options here. We're gonna call it make breakfast. And this is how I added those other three that are already done. Make breakfast, now I'm going to highlight it just like if it was another document and insert link. Now instead of pasting a link or searching, there's an option, the very first option is headings. You know that heading one I set the style to? If I click that, it shows up every single one of my headings. So I want this to link to make breakfast. It's a lot easier than creating multiple documents. The downside is somebody can just scroll through the document and see all the choices. Not much different from a choose your own adventure book because you know, you'd be reading through, you get to the list of the choices, so you'd keep your thumb right there pick another choice so you can read through the story and realize if you wanted to follow that choice or not and then easily go back. I don't know if everybody else read books that, the Choose Your Own Adventure books that way, but I did. So now we need to add one more. See this return to home? We want to add that to the bottom here. Return to home. So I may write the text first, then I can highlight that. Insert link, go to headings, and the home is the lost toy. That's the very first line in the whole book. And see heading one, so it goes to there. So let's see what this looks like. I'm just gonna go up here and change edit to preview. So the lost toy, I want to yell for mom. Yell for mom, you yell for mom and she tells you these things. Yet. Now this is a very simple example, but it catches the essence of creating your own choose your own adventure story in Google Docs. You can create it all in one Google Doc, use headings to easily create your links, or you can create them into your own folder that you share to everybody and each document can be a different document. The advantages of doing it with each chapter being a different document is you're not limited to Google Docs. You could put a Google presentation in here as one of the links to. One other piece we forgot to do on this is for other people to use it, we need to share that document, change the link so anyone with the link can do it, and copy the link. And if I would share this out, I would change that edit to preview and then copy that again. But now I've opened an incognito window so I know I'm not signed into Google and I can play this great, great, great game. Go back to bed. That's it for today. Go out and create something awesome. Be sure to like this video for the YouTube algorithm and check out my website over at educate.me. I post all sorts of neat stuff that you might wanna use in your classroom that might not work well as a video. Stay classy.